Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mengs, and I welcome you guys uh, to the long-awaited first part of Let's Play Wargroove. Uh, it is finally out, guys. You can stop tagging me on Twitter, wondering if I'm gonna play this game now. So, Wargroove, uh, the moment I saw the trailer for this game, I knew that I had to check it out. It is very much considered a spiritual successor to Advanced Wars. I think the story is that the people over at Chucklefish, they got so tired of waiting for another Advanced Wars uh, sequel that they just made their own. And that is pretty much an accurate way to describe this game. It is Advanced Wars, but with Fire Emblem units. Instead of tanks, you got mounted units, and instead of airplanes, you got dragons. There's also some magic chucked in here. I'm gonna be completely honest, guys, I'm not a big fan of the art style, and the music so far is, like, it's okay. But I am very, very, very unsure if I'm going to like this game or not. I am a huge Advanced Wars veteran. I played every single Advanced Wars game on the channel. Advanced Wars 1, Advanced Wars 2, Advanced Wars Days of Ruin, Advanced Wars Dual Strike. Uh, I still play Advanced Wars to this day with my friends. Played it for over 15 years at this point. So I absolutely adore the Advanced Wars series. And I am... I'm both excited and terrified at the prospects of playing a spiritual successor to Advanced Wars because on one side it could be really good, on the other side it could be really bad. I tried to avoid watching reviews of this game, I've just watched a couple of trailers, so I really don't know what I'm getting myself into here, but I figured, you know, let's just jump into it, let's see what it's like, and if we like it, we like it, if we don't like it, we don't like it. So let's just go. I will say, though, I am very happy that it's not for the PC. I did get it for the Switch as well, but um, recording on the Switch is an absolute nightmare, so I'm really happy I can do this on the PC, honestly. So yeah, I figured we'd just jump into the campaign. I figure I will probably get the hang of this pretty fast, considering I played Advanced Wars since I was like a baby. One rainy night at Cherrystone Castle. This weather is giving me the spooks. Did you hear that? Cut it out, it's just thunder. But I'm uh, going to patrol the throne room. Hey, wait for me. I do like the sound effects so far. They're really, really nice to listen to. Okay, we got a cat girl. Cowards, jumping at shadows and dropping their guard. Oh, her name is Sigrid, okay. That's very Norwegian. Hmm? Getting to the king shouldn't be much of a challenge. <laughs> there he is, all alone in his chambers. How convenient. The fewer guards I dispatch, the quicker this will be. But some unfortunate wretches still stand in my way. I'll start by defeating that one over there. Okay, so this is clearly a tutorial level. So we're inside a castle and we can see a bunch of guys. This is of course going to be a grid-based game as you can see. If you played Advanced Wars, you pretty much know how this works. Seems like she's got a movement range of four. And I'm just gonna start by attacking this guy. And here you see the battle screen, which is of course taken straight out of Advanced Wars. Oh, he died. <laughs> okay. So here we got the king that we want to kill. It's time. Time my daughter learned the truth. But how do I tell her? So far, I kind of like how this tutorial isn't, like, trying to guide you. It just allows you to play. That's kind of nice. I like it when tutorials don't hold you by the hand. Like, move cursor, three spaces to the right. Like, no, just let me, let's just let me play around, please. I'll make my way towards the king chambers. Alright, then. Let's do that. Yeah, this game is really intuitive. Like, it's not hard to figure out at all. This is a lot more RPG-ish and Fire Emblem-ish than I, than I thought it would be at first glance. Mercia, a long time ago before Cherrystone was Cherrystone. Hmm, no. So the king seems to want to tell something. Are we... Is she the king's daughter? Because this girl is a cat girl. This is laughably easy. Alright, let's kill this guard. I assume we don't want to go this way, because there's a lot of other guards over here. So, I'm also trying to look... You can see down in the bottom left corner, there is an indication of how much defense we get. I'm assuming the shield gauges are like, kind of like terrain stars in Advanced Wars, so the floor gives us two defense stars. So regardless of where we go, we get two defense stars when we're indoors. It doesn't matter where we attack this guy from, but looks like this girl one-shots them anyway, so it's fine. How 
foolish. <laughs> but I gotta say, it's kind of cool how we're sort of taking a, a a very fire emblemish approach to the first map here. We're, we're we're literally inside a castle fighting. It was once a kingdom called Cacophony and a war known as the Great Dissonance. And we got cat girls, so I guess people are happy about that. It's like, let's combine elements from games that everyone loves, you know? Let's put, put in some cat girls, some magic, some swords, some dragons, you know? Everything. This knowledge is too great a burden. Oh, Mercia. Okay, so Mercia is probably his daughter. I, I'm assuming Sigrid is not his daughter. Hmm, this castle is vast. If I access the overview screen, I can get a glimpse of its true extent. <laughs> I just need to select an unoccupied title and pick Overview. Okay. I just need to select an unoccupied tile. Um. Okay. I I don't I don't know what you mean by that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I think I think I found it, guys. This screen provided me with objectives and statistics. Hmm. So many humans. How unpleasant. Still, I can avoid most of them. As my objective says, I'm here to. I'm here for the king. If I can close this now and return to my task. Right, so again, this is also pretty familiar to anyone who's played Advanced Wars. This is pretty much the um, the screen that, that gives you like all the income, the gold, the units, everything. That's nice. Again, <laughs> feels super familiar to me. Time to defeat a few more hapless guards and make my way to the king's chamber. Alright, let's go kill this guy. I really like this music. I will say, I, I said that I initially wasn't a big fan of the music. This music is really nice. The animations are... growing on me a little bit, maybe? They still feel a little bit clunky, if I'm gonna be completely honest. My little bluebeard. I'll start slowly. My darling Bluebeard, I need to tell you something. Alright. Okay, so what is this place? I think it's just... I don't think it's anything in particular. I'm not sure if this game rewards exploration, per se. Turn 6. It's a very long story about something that happened a very long time ago. Alright, let's kill this guy. I kind of like how they're sort of giving you the story in short bursts, this though. Also, it looks to me like how they're doing just one guy at a time is to leave them at two health, so that it looks like it's just a single guard. Because if, if they're at ten health, you will they will be displayed as five units. That's kind of clever, really. A very long time ago, indeed. Why can't the past stay the past? Alright, it's time to meet the king. Hello. I also like how it asks you to confirm the move before it actually confirms the move. Kind of similar to how Days of Ruin did it. At last! You! How did you... What? Sigrid! <laughs> oh no. Humans are so frail. Wow, this is literally just left. Do you understand what you've just done? You'll start a war! <sighs> war? The inane squabble of children. Where is the key? Safe. Thanks. You'll never have it. The key is in safe hands, far from the grasp of a monster like you. <laughs> oh, you're gonna call her La Goose now. Safe hands. Before you die, understand this is n nothing is safe from me. Listen. I like how they're doing, or actually, do I like that? They're doing sort of the Awakening Fates thing where they just utter one voice line. You're making a mistake. Shush now. <laughs> Rip the king. <laughs> Still, the key eludes me. No matter. <laughs> it is close. I can feel it. You know, the, the Fs in this game kind of looks like P's. This really annoys me. Like, I almost said, I almost thought she said, I can peel it. <laughs> Alright, eight turns. Oh my god, there's rankings. I got an S rank. Wow, S rank the first mission. I'm just that good. Yes. Well done, Prince. Your skill with the Cherry Blade improves yet further. <laughs> cherry Blade, really? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Woof. Look, it's Seek. Woof. It's alright, Caesar. It's just one of the Royal Guard. 
Lord Emmerich. Hmm? Is this important? You disturb the prince's lessons. The king, my lord, the king has been killed! What? what? No. Oh, they're actually sort of semi-voicing their own lines. Father! I'm sorry. Mercy, I'm so sorry. <sighs> Who did this? <laughs> Sir, the assailant appears to have been a, 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 a vampire. Oh shit, a vampire cat girl? Wow. We're really, we're really mixing tropes here. The Felheim Legion. Princess Mercia, the murder of your father is an act of war. We must defend the kingdom. War? We're at war? Okay, so here we got the Overland campaign map. Again, feels so familiar to Advanced Stories. You unlocked an additional lore about Emmerich. Okay, so we can actually read up some lore if we want to. Again, I love optional lore. That's so good. I assume you click this book? No? Okay. Um... The beginning, under the cover of night, High Vampire Sigrid makes a daring attack on Cherrystone Castle. You can replay the mission, that's really cool, I like that. An unsure Mercia faces her first test as a monarch of Cherrystone. Alright, I think we can do one more mission, honestly. Several months later. My queen. Congratulations on your coronation, Queen Mercia. Emmerich, do you really think I'm ready to be a queen? I have no doubt. You are your father's daughter. Hmm. I hope you're right. <laughs> your Majesty, Felheim scouts have breached the border. What? They're here, in Cherrystone. Let's go. I can do this. <laughs> I know you can. You know the sound effects in this game are gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Wait, Your Majesty, your crown. Like holy shit, the sound effects are satisfying. Alright! I think this is more like a first map. These skeletal warriors are Felheim troops. We must defeat them all to secure this region. It really annoys me how the Fs look like Ps. Can you guys see that? Defeat them all! <laughs> we should begin by attacking the closest Dread Swords with our unit of Swordsmen! Right, let's get this over with and done with. So Swordsmen, they're probably your infantry units. And yeah, as you can see, the forest tile gives three defense, whereas the plain tile grants one defense. The roads grant no defense. So attacking from the forests. You can also see the... Oh, I really love this. You can see the amount of damage you will take and the amount of damage you will deal. So, 54% damage dealt and will take 13%. So it looks like first strike is very much a thing in this game. Very much a thing. And yeah, this is gorgeous. I love this. Absolutely. This is like two infantry attacking each other. Seems like even the damage values are similar. Notice the numbers that are appeared next to the two yeah. battling units. Yeah, this little number next to each of them. These represent the unit's health. They appear when it drops below 95%. The number 5 indicates that the Dread Sword is down at around 50% health. And my Swordsman is down to about 80% health. Got it. And let's attack the Dread Sword with our second Swordsman. Alright. And yeah, of course, if you attack first and you wipe the unit out, then you take no damage back. Just like in Advanced Wars. That, that makes a lot of sense. My queen, may I interject for just a moment? When selecting a target, the damage preview will appear above its head. The damage preview indicates what damage will be dealt by both units during combat. Sounds handy. You see, the health of a unit suggests more than how close it is to defeat. The more damage a unit takes, the weaker it attack powers becomes. So a healthy unit is a stronger unit? Indeed, but it looks like your swordsman will do just fine here. Yeah. This is all... This, it's a lot more similar to Advanced Wars than I thought it would be, actually. Literally identical at this point. Even the damage values are similar to Advanced Wars. So we're fighting against undead guys, and oh, look, they just popped in reinforcements. There will be reinforcements in this game, apparently. Hope, hope they won't be ambush spawns. More undead? It seems like they're not giving up quite yet. Turn two. Uh... Oh my god, holy shit. Friendly reinforcements have arrived. Okay, these guys are friendly, nice. Just in the nick of time. Look, it seems like we've been provided with a new unit type, Pikeman. This might be a good time for you to learn about critical hits. Uh, critical hits? Yes. All units have conditions under which their attacks are stronger. We call these attacks critical hits. I never heard of those. Do not worry, my queen. This information is easy to find. Let me show you how to find information about a unit's crits. So you click him and then what? We should find out more about the Pikeman. Um, okay. Oh, there you go. Right. This is the info screen. 
Here we can find useful information about our selected unit. This part gives us a good overview of the unit. Hmm, the pikeman crits when adjacent to another pikeman. You can bring up the info screen on any unit's terrain or structure. Use it often, and you'll learn fast. Alright, I'll make sure to check it out more often. When you're ready, you can close this window. Right, so slower, more powerful infantry, critical hits when adjacent to another spearman. That is so cool. That is so cool, I love that. So they have skills, essentially. And they move tree spaces. This is amazing. Fantastic well. work, really. We should make sure that the pikemen stick together. Got it. Alright, so... Right, so they want us to move it here. That makes sense. And that, that would also choke the points. We've lined up our first pikemen. Let's attack the dreadsword with our second pikemen. I want to read some more about these guys. Oh no, it doesn't want to let... Oh right, you gotta press for... it. I thought you could just select the unit. Uh, but apparently, it's not as intuitive. You gotta first click the unit, then click the space you want to move, and then click the unit you want to attack. I hope you can just drag your unit over to whatever unit you want to attack. Let me draw your attention to the damage preview once more. Oh, the arrow is flashing. Well spotted. A flashing arrow in the damage preview is a good sign. It indicates that you're about to land a critical hit. Alright, so that's just basically like anti-air versus infantry. Makes sense. Thanks for the placement of the first pikeman. Yeah. The second pikeman dealt a critical hit. <laughs> she learns fast. Ha ha ha! Keeping your pikeman together will ensure a stronger offense. When encountering a new unitype, it's important to learn about their crit. I'll leave you to defeat the rest of these Felheim Thank troops. You. Thank you, Emmerich. I couldn't have done this without you. Okay, so now we just gotta kill the remaining dudes. Sounds easy, honestly. So, can we read about the skeletons? Yeah, we can. Basic infantry, useful for capturing structures. Critical hits when adjacent to its commander. Okay. Makes sense. I wonder if they're... they... They're probably as strong as regular infantry. I assume, like, swordsmen and skeleton swordsmen are about as powerful as each other. My god, the sound effects in this game. I love them. Oh my god, I love them. Wonder, can you, can you skip the animations by pressing escape or something? Because that would be really cool. Turn two! So, they're gonna run head first into my pikemen. Ooh, that kinda hurt. Wait, are they pikemen as well? I guess they are. Yeah, they are. Yeah, look at that. They're, yeah, they're spearmen. Okay, so what if we just move back? And then we line up a critical hit like this. That's pretty goddamn satisfying, honestly. Kabooja! Did it, boys! That's the last of them. Well done, my queen. We did it! A good start, but Felheim won't stop there. We must remain vigilant. They'll be back? Yes! And in greater numbers. A whole horde of skeletons? Indeed, and much else besides. I'd forgotten you had so little experience with the undead. <sighs> Cherrystone is normally so peaceful. I've never seen them here before. But now they're coming, and they won't stop. An undead army? All undead but one. We've spoken in your lessons of their leader, Valder. Mm -hmm. A living man, and, uh... Yeah. And a necromancer of great power. I haven't forgotten. Well, we should make a move. The undead are likely to be advancing upon other parts of the kingdom. Uh... Emmerich, do you think Valder will come to Cherrystone himself? Yes. Your Majesty, I do. Okay. So, so far, I'm not, like, overly impressed by the story, but it is kind of cute. Your Majesty, wait. <laughs> it is very charming, this game. I will say that. It is definitely growing on me, and I like the gameplay so far. It's great. Character design is okay, I guess? But I never played the War series for character design anyway. I got an S rank. I, would be better if you got a little bit of a, like, a bling-bling animation, like, ka S rank, but, you know, I'm fine with this too. I think we have time for one more mission, guys. Let's do one more mission. It's the first episode. We can go a little bit over the clock. We've unlocked additional lore about Mercia, so how do I read about Mercia? No, I don't want to play the mission. How do I... How do I read about Mercia? Is there a... Like, what if I press escape? Codex, maybe? There you go. The Mercia must find her... Feet. Feet? Really? She must find her feet? <laughs> That's the new ruler of Cherrystone. Her inexperience is counteracted somehow, somewhat by her commitment, loyalty, and compassion. 
She's a talented commander and a natural leader, though she still needs the guidance and support of our friend and tutor, Emmerich. Holy shit, it's a lot of lore. Probably not gonna read all this on screen, but... You now there's the cat girl. Sigurd is a high vampire. Vampire. I, people make fun of me for the way I say vampire. An ancient being of prodigious power. She serves Valder, Lord of Felheim, and she considers her his most reliable subordinate. Like the icy wastes of her homeland, Sigrid is cold and brutal. Okay, so she's the Kudere waifu. Okay, I get it. Okay. You can also adjust... This is something that I heard you could do. You can actually adjust the difficulty, which is kind of funny. Maybe we should go... Oh my god, this is really cool, actually. So you can reduce your income... Groove charge. I don't know. I think groove is your power. So what if we uh, maybe we'll we'll amp the damage up by by ten percent and play on harder mode. Use if you want an additional challenge. There are no additional rewards. Okay. You know what? Just because I'm a worse veteran, we're gonna turn the damage up to twenty percent, and we're gonna nerf our income by. Uh. We'll do like. We'll make it 10% harder, okay? Or you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm learning this game. So, we're gonna put it at 10% increased difficulty. I think I can do that. I'm a war sweater on. And once I get, like, learn more about game mechanics, I'm gonna amp it up to 20%. I, that is, I love this. This is great. I really like this. Okay, let's go. The Felheim invasion begins in earnest. Oh no. <laughs> It is kind of hard to take this game seriously with animations like this. It's kind of like chibi art, you know? It's like, oh, these are so adorable. <laughs> no. The kingdom's overrun with Felheim soldiers. We have to do something. Hmm? We will hold what land we can. Hmm. Maybe if we, uh... Not so past. <laughs> Who are you? Oh my god, holy shit. I'm the person that's going to smash, bash, and pulverize you. Okay, we're, we're Viking lady right here. Alright. Fight me! Okay, fight me one-on-one, -on -one, mate. Holy shit. Undead Viking lady. Oh, are they ca Oh, they're capturing the building, aren't they? Yep, they are. That is really cool. Oh, what a cute animation. This reminds me of Super Famicom Wars, honestly. Did you see that? The Felheim hordes just captured a village to the west. They'll attempt to claim the neutral village to the east next unless we stop them. And well, let's stop yes. them. Luckily, a cherry stone ranger is here to help us. Rangers are units that can attack enemies from a distance. Let's move it into a position from where we can attack any approaching undead. Sounds good. Okay, so we got our artillery, pretty much. Uh, so this is a ranger. Let's put it there. From this position, our rangers can attack any enemies approaching from west. When you want to end your turn, select an unoccupied map tile and select Enter. Yeah, this is pretty standard stuff. Man, she is hideously ugly. <laughs> okay, so can we shoot now? Are you remembering to check the unit uh, in, in post screen to learn about critical hits? Yeah, good, then you'll know what rangers crit if they attack without movement. Oh, that's so cool! We'll attack the dresser without moving the ranger now. That is so cool. So they, they crit when they don't move. Oh, that is... I love it. I love it. Now we need to select the tile from which to perform the attack. But since we don't want the archer to move, we simply select the same tile again. Makes sense. So when they stand still, they deal more damage. That is such a cool compromise. So you can move them if you want to, but they deal less damage. I love that. I really love that. We did it. <laughs> We may have defeated those soldiers, but it's not over yet. The enemy owns a barracks. This will enable them to recruit new units. Fortunately, we have to access the barracks of... We have access to a barracks of our own. We should select it to recruit a new unit at once. Okay, I'm on it. Okay. So this is the base, essentially. Swordsman, Pikeman, Ranger. This barrack lets you recruit three different unit types. Swordsman, Pikeman, and Rangers. That's right, but due to our current funds, I can only afford the Swordsman, right? A single swordsman can make a big difference. Let's recruit one now. So they cost a hundred. Basically like infantry cost a thousand and advanced force. Makes sense. Let's recruit. You can even decide where they pop up. That's great. Note that each barrack can only recruit a single unit per turn. Right, I'll make sure to remember that. Oh my god, please. You know what? If they make an airport joke, I am going to laugh so hard. Oh my god. 
I don't I don't even know what airport would be in Wargroove, but god damn it. If she if she went like, what's that again? I will laugh so hard. Please, please show us that you're true fans of the worst games. Select our new swordsman and order it to move and capture the village. Okay. Oh, you can capture it when you're next to it. That makes sense. I love these little animations. They're so much like Super Famicom Wars. I love it. Even the Advanced Wars series never had animations for, for capturing, at least not in that way. You know, they, they would jump on the buildings, but still. Excellent work, my queen. Villagers bring in 100 gold every turn, so they're incredibly important to the war effort. Right, because more gold means we can recruit more units. Correct, in fact, we can cripple the enemy's income by taking their village to the west. Yes. To capture a village that is owned by a different faction, we must first defeat it. Mm. Then I'll recruit more units straight away and order them towards that village. Aha. Uh -huh. Alright, let's get a pikeman next. Some units are more efficient than others at defeating structures such as villages. I advise you to rely on pikeman's powerful crit for this job. Alright, I'll recruit a pikeman and send him towards the enemy village. Okay, let's get the pikeman. Kaboosh! And I'm guessing this ranger can just... Uh, maybe, can we move into the mountains? Yeah, we can. That's cool. I love it. Alright, come at me, bruh. Oh god, more reinforcements. <laughs> enemy reinforcements to the north. They'll no doubt be heading towards your northern villages. I should have known the enemy wouldn't make this easy for us. I suggest you don't leave the northern part pat unattended. I'll make sure to leave a unit to protect the northern villages. Okay, so now we just gotta... Now we can play around a little bit. That's great. Okay. Uh, let's keep capturing this village. I, no, did, did we already get it? Oh my god, do you capture villages in a single turn? That's, uh... That's interesting, actually. Alright, so I'm still sort of getting the hang of this movement here. Let's go get a... Wow, rangers cost 500. That's so expensive. But they're good, though. Okay, so I'll let myself be attacked here. Maybe not the most ideal. Oof. Yeah, first strike is very much a thing in Wargroove as well, which I don't mind, honestly. In Super Famicom Wars, units tend to attack at the same time. Okay, so we don't have another pikeman to be adjacent to, but I guess we can go back and heal? Yeah, we can- Oh my god, you can pay money to repair! That is amazing. I love it. That is so cool. So you just pay money and you get instant heal. That is so much better than the two hit points of healing per turn you get passively for standing on top of a structure. Let's see, how does rangers... Do they get... Um, do they get better in the woods? No, they just get better when they stand still. So we'll, we'll keep them in the mountains. They can snipe those guys from the mountains. I think that's very much what they're intended to do, honestly. Okay. You get four defense from a mountain. Even the terrain values are similar. So I don't mind that at all. Okay, so we should be able to snipe those guys with the rangers now. I like how they just let us play around a little bit now. Oh my god, that's actually just a one-shot. Kapew! I like it! It's great! I can just snipe them as they come. I, be I bet you can check enemy ranges as well. Yes, yeah, so they can actually attack us next turn, which is a little bit sad. Uh, let's move in, attack with our pikemen. They do 80% damage, that's pretty good. Keep in mind I'm playing with a 10% handicap. And I don't think that affects my damage, though. I think that only affects the damage I take. Because I, I was able to control how much damage I take from the enemy, but not, but not how much I deal. Uh, let's get another pikeman, why not? I really like that you can decide where they pop out. That definitely is pretty good. Alright, so can the rangers attack in melee? Oof. Uh, they can, actually. Okay. That's really good. But they're not that great. Considering they cost 500, and these guys cost 100, and I took 50% damage, that means that they were basically five times as cost-effective as me. And of course, if you've ever played worse games, it's all about being cost-effective. Okay, can you... What happens if I... Okay, so if I attack in melee, then they will attack back. But I can go back and attack from a distance, but I deal less damage, because I'm not standing still. That... I love these units, honestly. This is an incredibly good approach to indirect combat. Really, really well done, honestly. And this is the HQ, I think? It looks to be the HQ. Oh my god, they defend themselves inside the villages? That's so cool! I love it! I love it! 
Okay, this is great. This is definitely not something that was part of Advanced Wars normally. I mean, you could defend in cities, but this is... I, I, I love the visuals of it. I really do. Does this mean I will win? No, there's one more building left, I think. <laughs> oh! What? How did this happen? Excellent. You cleared the enemy from the village. You should capture it to secure it before Ragnar takes it back. Got it! This is amazing. I love it. Let's get another... Can we get more rangers? Why can't I get more rangers? Oh, I can. Okay, that's that's confusing, because I'm not sure if you guys saw that, but they flashed red. Okay, will I lose my unit now? Oof. Okay, I lost my unit now. Oh no, my village! But it's okay, it's gonna defend itself, I think. Yeah, it defends itself. So, all villages defend themselves, kind of like turrets. I like that. So, they you don't need necessarily to send units at them. Anyway, uh, that pikeman can defend. I'm gonna send these rangers over here. Yeah, I'm not sure if you guys saw that, but for some reason, the ranger, it shows... Oh, never mind, it just has a red hood, that's why. For some reason, I think it looked like it flashed red, so I was like, I don't have enough cash to, uh, or no money. There you go. Down with you, Ragna. Alright, I want to capture this village. I think I will do that now. Okay, so now it's now it's neutral. I get it. So first you gotta kill the village. And then you gotta capture it. No! Well done. With no villages, the enemy has no income. You'll notice that a capture structure never begins with full health. In fact, it starts with the equivalent of half the capturing unit's health. So if a unit with 40% health captures a village, the village starts with 20% health? Yes. Now we should destroy their barracks to completely remove them from yeah. this region. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so I get it. I get it. You... No, wait, this is not a good move, honestly. Um, I think I'll probably just reinforce. So you can always capture a, unit, a building in a single turn, but if you do it with a low hit point unit, then it, the village starts at lower health. That is really cool, actually. That also means that they can take it back right away. But I don't, I don't think I lose anything from doing that. I can just recapture it. So... Yeah, I don't, I don't see the problem, honestly. Let's just go recapture it. There you go. <laughs> okay, I see. I see how this works. I gotta admit, this is a very different approach to the capture game of Advance Wars. But I like it. It definitely means that buildings will ping-pong back and forth a lot more between players. But the whole do exactly one point of damage to an infantry to interrupt the cap... I do like the Capture Wars and Advanced Wars. It is a pretty compelling metagame, but this definitely spices it up in a big way. And, well, I don't know if I like it yet. I'm gonna have to play a little bit multiplayer to, you know, decide if it's a good mechanic or not. It could very well be super annoying. But so far, it's new and fresh, and I love it. Let's get a mo another Ranger. I wonder if spamming units will increase your ranking like it did in Advanced Wars. Okay, so now... Are they just going to take back the village now? Yeah, okay. So again, as I as I suspected, we'll see a lot of ping-ponging back and forth. But this is fine. We can just take it back instantly. Oh my god, the sound effects as always. The one thing I'm not I'm noticing though, units don't seem to level up. If there is a level up function, it's not enabled yet, but I do hope it becomes a thing. I know that hero units are a thing in this game, so I would really like it if we have some sort of experience. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can... Can I cancel the animation somehow? I don't... I pressed both enter and escape, but nothing happened. So, uh, anyway, I'm gonna go and uh, reinforce my units. Again, I love how you can just fully heal units with gold. That is really cool. Alright, uh, I'm gonna just build more units in case it increases my ranking. Okay, so now I can't recruit the guy. I see. So, I don't think they can build any more units at this point. Can I attack them from there? No, I have to move. So, it seems like it almost cuts your attack power in half when you move. So, critical hits are like, what, 50% more damage or something? Sounds like it. So, I can go and reinforce for 24 gold. I gotta check, is it... Is it cheaper to reinforce your uh, units? 175. It actually seems like it's a lot cheaper to heal. 
which is kind of cool. So it's actually beneficial to repairing. In Advanced Wars, repairing was something you almost never wanted to do. Because it just costs as much money as the other units. And it just sapped your income, pretty much. Okay, so they can still build units. Interesting. Alright, well... Okay, cool, we can attack them now. Again, I wish there was a way to... Can you just press X to... Skipping in 2, 1... Really? It takes 3 seconds to skip? Okay. Why, though? Okay, so you have to hold in the mouse button to skip the animations, but it takes 2 seconds, which is almost as long as the animations itself. Which, uh... I don't know, that's a bit dumb, if I'm gonna be completely honest. Why can't I just skip the animations right away? Alright, I'm just gonna end the turn. There's no point in spamming more units. I, again, I don't know if it actually affects what? your ranking. What? I don't have enough gold to recruit a new unit! Wah wah. <laughs> Alright, let's murder this guy. Oh no, wait, that's my guy. <laughs> Alright, you can't shoot at vill- Okay, you have to go in melee combat against the village? I guess rangers are not good capturing units. That's fine. So it seems like pikemen are pretty good at this shit though. I'm guessing, I hope there's gonna be like siege units, like battering rams and stuff like that. That sounds cool, honestly. So you cannot, wait, you can attack a unit from a distance. I just selected melee combat for some reason, okay. And apparently buildings cannot defend themselves at a range. Okay. Makes sense. Still no gold? <laughs> what? No money? Literally no money for bike. Rip. Okay, let's capture the fort. Kabusha! No! no, this is not happening! Emmerich, we did it! Good work. Chatter, chatter. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> chatter, chatter. <laughs> I said, go away. Aww, poor skeleton, he just wanted to be your friend. What are... I said, go away! Oh, it's you. I, uh, didn't mean to disturb you. You didn't disturb me, I was lying in wait. Uh-huh, right? This isn't over! She's really mad. Oh, B rank. Okay. Wah wah. <laughs> okay, I, maybe I should have built more units or played faster. I don't know. Okay, congratulations. You unlocked Felheim in the Codex. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So that, I think, wraps it up for the first part of Wargroove. I like it. I like it so far. There are definitely things about it that fascinate me. Changes that puts it apart from Advanced Wars, but still similar enough that it feels like Advanced Wars, but with swords, magic, and dragons, which I think is very much what they're going for. The story is lighthearted, doesn't take itself too seriously. Uh, the characters, not that great on the design part, and I'm still not a huge fan of how this game looks, but I think it might grow on me over time, honestly. Um, not sure if I'm going to ramp up the difficulty any further. I do feel like it's, it's pretty easy so far, because I know the game better. Uh, I, did, I did only get a B rank, so maybe I should keep it at 10% for now. We shall see. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Himmeng. I do hope you give this guy uh, video a like and a comment. If you want to see more Wargroove, definitely do. Because uh, I'll be using sort of like... I like this game, but if you guys are not interested in seeing it, I won't continue to play it on the channel. I will probably just keep playing it for myself. But if you guys want to see it, if it gets enough views and get enough likes and gets enough comments, I will definitely keep playing it on the channel. So, you want to see more War Group, guys? You guys know what to do. Uh, my name is Ben Mengs. I shall see you guys next time. Bye-bye.